Hi, I'm Garrett with IDC Woodcraft and I'd like to welcome you to my channel and express appreciation for taking the time to come here to learn what I know about CNC routing and CNC in general. This video is for the CNC beginner and intermediate. When it comes to creating holes in the woodwork that you're working on, often when people are routing and they're trying to make accurate size holes, they have a lot of difficulty getting it to size. And there is a reason for that. The thing is, a lot of people may think that uh, it's something wrong with their machine, even though their machine may cut squares accurately. However, it's not. Cutting holes to a, the right size is actually a well-known problem in the CNC machining industry. And that's what CNC routing is. In fact, it's so well known that there are features built into commercial and industrial equipment that actually compensate for this kind of issue. It's called cutter compensation. However, at this level of CNC routing, it's typically not in the programs that you use or in the machines, which is really where that type of cutter compensation is set up at in the machine itself. However, the software you have does have features that will allow you to make the proper adjustments to the hole so that you can get very accurate hole sizes in the woodwork that you're cutting. Now, the reason, first of all, why you have difficulties and why this is uh, something that's actually built into the industry is because holes vary in sizes based on materials that you're cutting, the hardness of them, the type of tool you're using, how many flutes it has, the condition of the tool, the sharpness of the tool, and the speeds and feeds, there's so many variables that this feature has to be in the softwares that people use to actually cut holes. So I'm gonna show you how to set this up properly so you can get very accurate holes in your woodwork. Now this video is a result of an email my friend Jim has sent to me who also has a CNC router, a Bob's uh, CNC router, Bob's CNC, I think he's got an E4 if I remember correctly, um, which I have too, which cuts very well. And he says the thing cuts perfectly uh, in squares, but his circles are, are small and he, he can't solve the problem. So he turned to me for advice. And so I gave the advice to him and I realized this is an issue that needs to be shown to everybody, especially beginners. You know, this is uh, stuff that's going to take you to the next level. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to dive into my software and show you how to properly set up holes so that you can get the right size holes. Now, your software may be a little bit different. I am using VCard, but your software will have these features in it. It just may be laid out a little bit differently. What I'm gonna be teaching you is a little bit technical, so you're gonna to have to kind of wrap your mind around it. It's a little tough to explain, so you may wanna mark this video. Also, I have many videos for CNC beginners. You may wanna to subscribe to this channel so you can start to learn your CNC skills. I love passing on my knowledge to you so you can become a better CNC router machinist. Also, I've started a CNC Entrepreneurs Facebook group. The link is down below. Uh, lots of links down below. Check it out if you're a beginner. All right, so let's dive into V-Carve and let's show you how to solve this circle problem. Here we go. So here we are in V-Carve and I'm gonna walk you through this scenario that Jim sent to me uh, so you can uh, understand what's happening and how to fix this. So Jim is using a quarter inch end mill and he said that that end mill is dead nuts at 0.25 inches in diameter. He is trying to cut two circles, a large circle at 3.7 inches in diameter and a small circle at 0.38 inches in diameter. However, his large circle is cutting at 3.65 inches in diameter or a 0.05 inches too small. His small circle is cutting at a 0.375 inches in diameter or 0.005 too small. Now, that's getting pretty tight. Uh, these are actually machining tolerances in the metal industry. So Jim, I mean, <laughs> you're getting in there, but you can do this on wood. So let's talk about what he's actually getting. I just want to show you a demonstration here, <clears throat> picture-wise. The red circle is what he's actually getting, and the black circle is what he wants. 
and same with down here. Now you can see there's a significant difference in the gap. So the first thing I want you to take into mind is this number right here, the difference. Same with this one right here. So let's go into the tool paths and show and talk about how he has set it up and how you would normally set this up as a beginner. You would have your tools cut out the two circles in the same tool path. Now he's probably used a pocketing tool path. As a matter of fact, he has to use a pocketing tool path. This feature right here, a pocketing tool path looks like this. It's going to come into the middle and it's going to start to what they call interpolate around and it's going to work its way out until it gets all the way out to the final diameter and make a final pass. It's going to do the same thing on the small hole. Now there's a couple things I want you to take note of here. Obviously this uh, in the big hole there's a lot more uh, surface area that he's going to be cutting out. The small hole is very small. Now let's get kind of technical here. If I was to take a 0.25 circle, let's go ahead and get this guy in here and show you a 0.25 circle, 0.25, and I just plug one in right there and then one in right here. Okay, so on the small hole, you can see the 0.25 circle is going to be cutting out material about this long. Okay, so almost a fifth of the cutter is contacting material. So there's going to be some resistance in here. And then over here, the cutter is contacting on maybe a tenth of the cutter blade. So we can say for all intents and purposes, this is almost cutting along a flat line, whereas this is not, this is cutting into an arc. So this is just a concept I want you to keep in mind. This is cutting more material per pass than the other tool is. Now, <clears throat> Jim has probably set this up so he does, like I said, both holes at the same time in a pocketing tool path. Since these holes are so different in size, a magnitude difference, you want to set these up in separate tool paths. So as opposed to one pocketing tool path, you want to end it do uh, two separate pocketing tool paths. So I've done that. I've created one for the big hole and one for the small hole. That way we can control the variation in both of them. Now, before I go on, I want to say something. If you have this kind of issue, you don't want to go back into your design and change the diameter in the design because what if you go to a different size wood? You're not going to remember that you made that subtle change and you're going to go back and forth and do this kind of extra work. Now, you want to make the compensation in the cutting setups. So let me show you how to do that here in the tool path. So there's a couple things that you can do. The first one is, now I'm not going to discuss the settings by the way. We're cutting through the material up here, we're using a quarter inch end mill, we have one pass. This setting I do want to talk about. You're going to use an offset command. A raster actually cuts back and forth and does not, will not give you a good cleanup and you'll have lots of little ridges along there. Offset will just kind of go around in circles and work its way out. Now, the one of the things to take note of, are you using a climb or conventional cut? Now I want to talk about this for a little bit so you understand the difference. <clears throat> a climb cut is, your tool is rotating clockwise when you're looking down from the top of the cutting machine, the cutting motor. It's turning like that and a climb cut means it's actually like turning into the movement. So it's climbing along the cutting path. 
A conventional cut, this one on the other hand, right here, is in the opposite direction. It is actually uh, cutting into the toolpath. This is cutting along the toolpath or riding with it, uh, a climb is. The conventional is going against the cut. I hope that makes sense. I probably didn't explain that too well. But so one of the things you can do with this, oh, I have to explain this a little bit further. When you're doing a climb cut, and the tool is going like this, it's actually climbing along the material. So as the cutter blade strikes the material, there's resistance and it wants to push out away from the cut. So the tool is deflecting inward toward the center. And that means that this is gonna be taking off just a little bit less material. Whereas a conventional cut, it's actually grabbing the material and starting to shear it away. And by virtue of that, the tool is being drawn into the material or deflecting inward that way. And therefore, it's going to take away a little bit more material. So climb cuts traditionally are going to result in a smaller diameter type of hole or a smaller straight. Uh, it's going to take off less material. A climb cut is going to dig in and take away more material. Now you can switch to a conventional cut. However, the thing with that is it's not controllable. It's, it's gonna vary by hardness of the material. So instead of switching that, what you wanna do, since you already know what you're getting with the type of cut you're using, is you want to do a tool allowance. Now the allowance is taking this number into account. We're gonna go back to our 2D drawing for a second because I wanna explain what we are allowing for. Now, I don't want this to be in here because I want, don't wanna confuse you. Jim has a 0 .05 deviation here. Therefore, you can think of that 0 .05 like a circle. Half of the circle is on this side. You'll, you'll understand this in a second. And the other half is on this side. I have to draw this in here. The other half of the circle is on this side. When you add these halves up, you get 0 0.05. So whatever your deviation is, the first thing you wanna do is divide it by two. So our actual deviation is a 0 0.025. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna tell the machine or the program to compensate for a 0 0.025. And so down here, you have a feature called pocket allowance. And in pocket allowance, that's going to allow for any tool deviation. So our deviation is a 0 0.025. So we want to change this number for that deviation. Now, the thing to remember, this is where it gets confusing. If you use a pocket allowance, you are telling the tool to allow a 0 0.05 like that. So you would be telling it to come in inward if you're using a positive number. What we want to do is go negative. We want to tell the machine to make this a bigger hole. So what we're going to do is type in a minus 0 0.025. And what that's going to do, not a star, minus 0 0.025. And what that's going to do is that's going to tell the program to offset that tool a little bit bigger so that he can get a better hole. And that's how you compensate for that. And that says the tool did an empty tool path because I did not select the tool, the, the circle. I deselected it when I was in there. So we we're going to go back in and select that. 
and then we're going to calculate. <clears throat> and so now what the, the machine or the program will do is move that tool out by a 0.025 and that will take care of the one side and the other side. That's how you fix the hole. Now, on the smaller hole, let's go in and fix that allowance. Instead of a minus 0 0.025, we have to click, there we go. Instead of a minus 0 0.025, we have to go minus 0 0.0025 and then calculate. Because there's such a big difference in the offset of these holes, a 0 0.05 and a 0 0.005. So I hope that makes sense. I'll just quickly rehash this. We are, when you get, when first of all, when you're cutting two different size holes that are such a difference, you want to separate your tool paths. So we have two different pocketing tool paths, one for the big one, one for the small one. You can cut your holes, and now that Jim knows that when he's cutting this size hole, he's going to have about that much material uh, that he needs to get rid of over what he's put in for his dimension. And the same with down here. Divide that number by two. Go into your pocketing toolpath. You can do this in profile toolpaths too. In this case, the small hole, we can do a profile toolpath. But I'm not going to go into that. <laughs> um, you want to go into your pocketing toolpath and go to pocket allowance and to make your hole bigger you have to use a negative number you enter in this number divided by two as a negative generate the toolpath or calculate the toolpath and the G code that gets generated will take that into account like this video if this made sense to you and helped you become a little bit better CNC machinist also I or a, a CNC router machinist and also I have started a CNC entrepreneurs Facebook group the link is down below in the uh, description and uh, sign up if you're interested in turning your CNC router into a business if you want to know more stuff, subscribe to my channel. I talk about CNC basics all the time. And VCarve tutorials. I've got playlists, so you can subscribe to them as well. And I've links down below of uh, various tools you need to get. So don't forget to sign up for that Facebook group. I'll talk to you next time.